There are many ways life on Earth could end. An asteroid explosion like the one that killed the dinosaurs, or a nuclear war between countries. To ensure the survival of humanity, we must find another place to settle, Stephen Hawking once said. I don't think the human race will survive the next thousand years unless we spread into space. Humans have migrated from Africa and explored new territories throughout history. It's in our DNA to conquer new frontiers. Today our next frontier is beyond Earth. One promising destination is Mars. But how can we turn Mars into a new home for humanity? One bold idea comes from Elon Musk. Nuke Mars. By detonating nuclear bombs over the planet's polar ice caps, we could release enough CO2 and water vapor to kickstart an atmosphere. This controversial idea could be a game changer in our quest to terraform Mars. So why Mars? First and foremost, its proximity to Earth makes it an ideal candidate for colonization. Mars is located in the Goldilocks zone, where temperatures are just right for liquid water. Mars shares many similarities with Earth. Its size is about half that of our planet, and a day on Mars is just a little over 24 hours. Mars also has seasons, polar ice caps, and weather patterns somewhat similar to Earth. While its atmosphere is much thinner and composed mostly of carbon dioxide, the presence of water ice on Mars provides hope for future terraforming efforts. These factors make Mars the most promising candidate for creating a new home for humanity beyond Earth. Terraforming Mars comes with significant challenges. The Martian environment is currently inhospitable for Earth-based life. Let's break down some of the main obstacles we face. Temperature. Mars is cold, with average surface temperatures around minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 60 degrees Celsius. In winter, it can drop to minus 195 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 125 degrees Celsius. These freezing temperatures make survival impossible without specialized habitats. Atmospheric pressure. Mars has a thin atmosphere, with pressure less than 1% of Earth's. This thin atmosphere cannot support human life or protect us from harmful radiation from space. The lack of pressure would also cause bodily fluids to boil at normal body temperature. Oxygen. Mars's atmosphere is composed of about 95% carbon dioxide and only trace amounts of oxygen. Humans need oxygen to survive, so we must find a way to produce it on Mars. Water. While there is water ice on Mars, liquid water is scarce due to the low temperatures and pressures. Accessing and managing water resources will be crucial for supporting life and growing food. Human fragility without the right temperature, atmospheric pressure, oxygen, and water. Human life is incredibly fragile. Overcoming these challenges is essential for making Mars a habitable planet. While we work on the long-term goal of terraforming Mars, our first step is to establish initial bases and habitats. We'll start by building Mars colonies in closed compartments and subsurface spaces where we can control the environment. Picture living in a high-tech underground bunker on Mars, shielded from extreme cold and radiation. This isn't sci-fi, it's the first step in making Mars our new home. Let's explore how we're turning this vision into reality. Robotic systems will play a crucial role in this phase. Robots will build structures, mine resources, and perform maintenance tasks, reducing risks and allowing for more efficient expansion. To sustain life, we need artificial greenhouses. These will support plant growth, providing food and oxygen for the colony. Creating controlled environments will help us produce essential resources right on Mars. As these initial bases grow, they will lay the groundwork for future expansion. This short-term plan is essential for transitioning to our more ambitious goals. With the foundational bases established, we can shift our focus to the long-term goal of terraforming Mars. Terraforming begins with creating a thicker, warmer atmosphere. One bold idea proposed by Elon Musk involves using nuclear explosions over Mars' polar ice caps to release CO2 and water vapor, kickstarting a greenhouse effect to warm the planet. Another approach is to deploy factories that produce greenhouse gases like CFCs. These gases would trap heat in the Martian atmosphere, warming specific areas and making them more habitable. Combining these methods will gradually increase atmospheric pressure and temperature, making Mars more Earth-like and preparing it for future human colonists. Establishing a livable atmosphere is the first major step in our journey to transform the Red Planet into a new home for humanity. Water is essential for making Mars habitable. To bring this crucial resource to the Red Planet, we have a few bold strategies. Melting ice caps. Using orbital mirrors or advanced technologies, we can focus sunlight on Mars' polar ice caps to melt them and release water. Nuclear ice melters, nuclear-powered devices could be used to melt ice reserves at the poles, accessing water directly. Importing water. We could redirect comets or asteroids with ice to impact Mars, delivering water upon collision. Subsurface extraction. 
advanced drilling could tap into water stored in underground ice deposits. By implementing these methods, we can create a water-rich environment on Mars, essential for supporting human life and agriculture. Creating an oxygen-rich atmosphere on Mars is crucial for human survival. One method is to introduce photosynthetic microorganisms, such as extremophiles and genetically engineered bacteria, which can convert CO2 into oxygen through photosynthesis. These organisms would feed on the CO2 in Mars's atmosphere and produce oxygen as a byproduct, gradually increasing oxygen levels over time. Additionally, hardy plant species capable of surviving in low-pressure, high CO2 environments can be introduced. Starting in controlled environments, these plants will adapt to Martian conditions and contribute to oxygen production through photosynthesis. By combining photosynthetic microorganisms and hardy plants, we can transform Mars' atmosphere, making it richer in oxygen. This brings us closer to creating a breathable environment for future human colonists on the Red Planet. Creating a sustainable ecosystem on Mars starts with soil development. Martian soil, or regolith, needs to be enriched with nutrients to support plant growth. This can be done by composting organic waste from human habitats and greenhouses using Martian minerals and rocks, and introducing nitrogen-fixing bacteria. As the soil becomes fertile, we can introduce more complex plant species, providing food, oxygen, and contributing to the ecosystem's health. Biodiversity is key. Gradually introducing various plants creates a balanced, self-sustaining environment. Once a stable plant ecosystem is established, we can introduce simple animals to pollinate plants and break down organic matter, adding complexity and stability. Through soil enrichment and the introduction of plants and animals, we can develop a sustainable ecosystem on Mars, supporting human life and ensuring the success of terraforming efforts. Once we've established a vibrant ecosystem, the next big leap is expanding our Martian homes. From building new habitats to growing food locally, let's explore how we'll turn our Martian base into a bustling, self-sustaining community. This involves building infrastructure to support a growing population, including residential areas, research stations, and community centers. Expanding agriculture is vital for local food production, using techniques like hydroponics, aeroponics, and traditional farming in nutrient-rich soil. Sustainable living practices are essential, utilizing renewable energy sources like solar and wind power to minimize environmental impact. Efficient recycling systems will manage resources, creating a closed-loop system that reduces waste and maximizes available resources. Through infrastructure development and sustainable practices, we can expand human settlements, creating a thriving, self-sustaining community on Mars. This marks the final step in making Mars a new home for humanity. Terraforming Mars and establishing a human presence is a long-term endeavor. Initial research and robotic missions will take 10 to 20 years. Building early habitats and starting oxygen production will require an additional 20 to 30 years. Developing a stable ecosystem with enriched soil and diverse life could take 50 to 100 years. Expanding settlements and infrastructure to support a larger population will unfold over several decades. How long will it take to make Mars our new home? The journey is lengthy but each milestone brings us closer. Imagine what Mars could look like centuries from now as we slowly transform it into a world where humanity can thrive. Though it's a long journey, every step brings us closer to making Mars a new home for humanity. This long-term vision ensures our survival and prosperity beyond Earth. Terraforming Mars is an ambitious challenge involving atmosphere creation, water introduction, and ecosystem development. While the journey is long, the rewards ensuring human survival and opening new frontiers are immense. With determination and innovation, turning Mars into a habitable world is within our reach. Every step brings us closer to a future where humanity can thrive on multiple planets. Are you excited about the possibility of living on Mars? What part of this journey fascinates you the most? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and if you're curious about more space adventures, hit that like button and subscribe to explore the curiosity. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey.